Hey everybody, Jackson Galaxy, your cat daddy here. And if you miss Jackson Galaxy's Cat Camp, September 2020, you also miss this wonderful session. And never fear, bringing it to you right now. It's how TNR serves a community. It's a really important topic because if you don't know, you're surrounded by community cats and you probably haven't noticed them before. So if you're one of us, if you are a cat camper, you're asking yourself, well, what can I do? Well, to your rescue comes Wills Weikart of Flatbush Cats and Latanya Sassy Walker. Both of these guys are TNR rock stars in Brooklyn, New York, and they've made a huge impact. And they're here to tell you how little things that you can do not only save these cats' lives, not only reduce their numbers, but they also serve your community in general. It's a great topic, and I really hope there's something that you take away from this. And the most you can take away is hey, we can do something to save lives together. Let's do it, all right? Light, love, and mojo to you. Hey, everybody. Thanks for joining. I'm Will from Flatbush Cats, and I'm joined by uh, Sassy. We're really excited to have a discussion with you guys about um, community engagement and the role that TNR plays. Sassy, can you hear us? Yes. Hi. Hello. So. Hey. We're, we're going to have a little Q&A with you, and, and um, I know you have a lot of amazing stories to share with everybody. So before we do that, I think we need to just do a little bit of intro about what Trap Neuter Return is and what do we mean when we talk about community engagement. I think the main difference is we all love our cats, our indoor cats, and then we start on a different journey when we see another cat outside. It's not our cat, right? Um, we call those community cats. That's a broad term. Community cats includes free roaming cats, uh, feral cats, who, which means wild, unsocialized cats. And you have been a hero and a, an icon and an inspiration for folks in New York and beyond because of all the work you do for other people, um, helping, helping members of the community and helping other cats. So. Um, tell us just a little bit about how you got started and how you found yourself working in, in this space on a volunteer basis. What, what was that first cat? Like, how did, you, how did you embark on this journey? Well, hi. Welcome, everyone. Welcome, IG. I'm glad to be here. And happy birthday to everyone's birthday today. We got a lot of people that's spending their birthdays with us. So I, I'm Sassy. I'm from Brooklyn. I live in, you know, East New York, Canarsie, Brownsville. I started out going, walking my dog and kept seeing kittens was the beginning. I was taking kittens to ACC like every other month. And then I finally seen the mother and she was pregnant again. And then it embarked on that litter of kittens. I started feeding, then I knew I had to do something. Then I took the class with neighborhood cats. And then after I TNR my first colony, which is where I live at in NYCHA in Brookline, uh, was 28 cats. And then, yeah, I thought I was going to be done after that and just feed them and take care of them. But then as I was traveling to and from work, once you start, you notice everything. And then I knew it was a matter of I had to start reaching out and helping others around me in the community. You see the cats, they're in really bad shape. It was no ignoring it anymore. I knew I had the skills. I had, you know, the experience. So I went ahead and just started. And then once I started, woo, <laughs> it didn't stop. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Mm -hmm. and so what was the, um, when we talk about trap, neuter, return, what does that actually mean? What, what is it? What is trap, neuter, return? How does it work? So trap, you trap the cat, um, you get the neuter spayed, the and then you return them to the colony, the return them to where you trap them at. Um, that's definitely for feral cats, you know, or cats who aren't human or I'm not interested in, you know, human socialization, obviously. So the best thing to do is return them where they live because they know where to get food, they know where to get shelter, and that's where they're comfortable at. So to do in doing this, you would control your population. You won't have new litters and a whole bunch of other cats and no fighting and the spraying and the dead kittens and the sick kittens and the sick cats. And it just it's such a nice feeling and it looks good for them. It makes them healthier. They have their shots, their rabies. It's just everything about it is good. Everything. You know, if you don't do it, you will just 
the population will just grow out of control. Definitely. And so one of the things that we talk about during TNR classes is how we can't do this work without the community. And I think sometimes within animal welfare, we, we meet folks who say they're cat people. I only like cats. I don't like people. But actually, it's the opposite. To do the most good, to help as many cats as possible, we actually have to love people. We have to love our community. And I know you have dealt with a number of challenging personalities and very generous personalities throughout. And so I, we wanted to spend a little bit of time during this session talking about the importance of community engagement and hearing some stories from you about specific cats um, and how you've had to work with folks in order to help those cats. I don't know if we can pull up the first, um, the first photo and I'm gonna ask you about some of these, these cats and you can tell us about some of the experiences that you had. You got it. Um, can we pull up the first photo? So do you see the photo? Because you can There it is. Okay. Okay, so we have a picture of a cat, a black and white cat in a trap. What's the story with this cat? So the black and white cat, is that the one with the half tail? Uh, I believe so. He's in a trap, yeah. Okay. So the story with that one, he actually comes from the colony of the kitten who passed away, whose mother I got. So now this block is half cat lovers and half not cat lovers because a human actually cut his trap, his tail, sorry. So at first I knocked on everyone's door to try to find out who was feeding, who even cared for the cat because I didn't see them. I knew they were there, but I didn't know which times they were there, you know, with having a job and stuff. You got to have the community involved because you. Know, I was going before work, wasn't seeing them, after work, wasn't seeing them. So I needed someone to, I needed to find out who knew about the cats. So after the third or fourth door, I met one of the woman who does feed, and um, I met her daughter. Her daughter gave her the number. So the woman appeared to be nice at first, and then she was very hostile when I came to trap. You know, she was yelling, scaring the cats off, and you know, putting the food out, and you know, and I knew that eventually I win her over. It's just you know, a lot of them they they become aggressive because they think you're going to harm the cats. They don't want the cats obviously to be euthanized or to, you know, of some stranger come and take them away and then they're gone. So that is why I've learned throughout the years is the aggression doesn't necessarily mean they just don't want me to help. It's just they don't know who I am. They don't trust me. So yeah. after she seen that I brought the mom cat back now, which is went from, oh, I hate you. Get off the block. I go on the police and, you know, yelling at the cats and throwing stuff. And, you know, it went from that to calling me up. Oh, there's more cats now at the other end of the block. So it goes, and she was like, you know, and I know who did it to the tail. I'm not going to tell you yet because I got to live here. I don't want any problems. But it went from hostile to now we helping each other. You know, I told everyone she runs across, you give them my phone number because it's in this neighborhood. Let's try to get as many done as we can. So that's that experience with that cat. Yeah. Sassy's going to win everybody over. You just. <laughs> no, no, no. There was one lady I didn't win over. I still yeah. haven't won her over. <laughs> <laughs> actually, I should actually I should clarify that I was joking, but really, we're not going to win over everybody, right? There's some scenarios where, um, you know, look, the the cranky person on the corner doesn't own the cats living in the alley, and and although we're going to do everything we can to try to build relationships with our neighbors, um, sometimes you can't break through to everybody, right? We're definitely learning that this year, especially. But you also mentioned an important point, which is. Everybody's kind of in a, in three categories. There's the cats are at a nuisance that I'm not a big fan I'm, and I'm being polite there. A lot of times people have very strong negative opinions. There's a group that's kind of indifferent and they're like, oh, okay, whatever, do what you need to do. And then there's, there's a group who are feeding the cats and they love the cats. But interestingly enough, sometimes they can be one of the more challenging groups to work with, right? Because yeah. they, they think you're going to take the cats away. Right. That's so true. Like I'm helping in Brownsville on this block and no one on the block feeds. So you would consider them to be like the indifferent, the ones indifferent, like I don't really care. And the other ones is like, oh, I hate them. They go into the garbage and stuff. But one thing was funny is all of them were like, yes, 
trap the cat so it won't be anymore. And I don't care if you bring them back or not, as long as it just don't be anymore. So, you know, those are the ones who you'd be surprised. They're the quicker ones. You can put it on their property. They'll even call you. They'll even say, I'll watch the trap if you want to go run off and let you know when the cat get in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's funny yeah. that you said that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, one thing we try to do is we, we assume positive intent, right? Whenever we're meeting a new neighbor, we always start on a positive. So, you know, sometimes people worry they're getting busted when you're like, yo, who's feeding these cats? They're like, I mean... <laughs> especially like older guys, they won't even admit to feeding the cats. I'm like, dude, I know you're feeding the cats. So, so before they even, before I even ask, I just say, thank you. Thank you for feeding. Thank you yeah. for caring for these cats for that. That's love, right? I mean, you're doing yeah. that every day. That's not an accident. You didn't just trip and trip and fall with three cans of food in a, in a clean <laughs> water bowl every day. So they'll play it off, but really there's love there. And we, we start with that connection on, on, that whether they admit it or not, they probably love these cats. Um, and so we begin every situation treating that community member as a potential volunteer. Yeah. The, the, the reality is we're all busy. I don't have kids, but a lot of people have kids. They have elder sick, sick relatives. They have um, job stress, housing stress, lots of different um, issues could be preventing somebody from maybe doing everything they'd like to do with cats, but we still begin with the possibility that everyone we meet could be working with us in, in three months, right? They could be they could be on Team Sassy helping helping with the next project. Flatbush cats. <laughs> right. So so speaking of that, we're gonna pull up the second photo. Um, and you guys saw a video when we first got started. That's perfect. That's the one. You saw a video where like I was reaching in between two buildings and trying to grab these kittens out. And I think it's important to note all of the, all of the rescuers that you follow on Instagram, all of the folks that you see, there's a whole network of people behind us, usually neighbors, community members who are alerting us to these situations. And the model is not for me and Sassy and like two other people to go around and do all the work. The model is every time we meet somebody else, we're going to get you involved and we're, we'll do we'll do the heavy lifting maybe that first time i always tell people first one's free we'll go in we'll help you out right but i'm going to get you signed up for tnr this is the mom and these are the kittens from that video and this is mama lira and her little her little nugs her little meatballs and that situation we had to act quickly i mean the reason why it was like a crazy you know extraction is because there was a big dog in that backyard the neighbors had gotten home they weren't they had not been there and they saw this situation i couldn't wait a day i mean there was no chance that these kittens were safe um in this backyard and so when we went in um you know if we had had more time i would have talked to the neighbor about trap new to return i would have said here's some ways you could get involved would you be interested in fostering in this situation we just had to jump in but while i'm there I saw like five or six other cats over here, over here, over here. I popped that, sar I popped those sardines. <laughs> Every, all the cats coming to the yard. And so I said, I'm going to rescue these. You, you're going to help me with all of these. And so the, the resident is getting TNR certified. He's got a couple kids. He's busy, but he was like, you know what? I said, look, just, just help me fix the cats on your block. That's the model. I don't need you running around Brooklyn, like, you know, jumping out of planes, catching every kitten. I just need you to help me fix these cats. And that, I can't stress enough, everyone you meet, you know, you have the opportunity to inspire them, you start out by helping them, and then ultimately they realize that this is something that they could do as well. Yeah, very true, well said, well said, well So when said. did you realize, Sassy, when did you realize that you needed help? Like, wh who were some of the folks that you reached out to in the community when you realized look, I can't do this by myself. And you do a lot, but who did you, who did you reach out to when you realized you needed to, to build a network? Well, I think what made me start, because when I first started, it was more hostile, it, it seemed, that then, because that was like 2011 or something. But I remember the first time when I, because before I didn't speak to anybody, I would just go and just trap and just, but when I needed to get on people's property, and then when they were like, they would call the police, when I realized it's really against the law, to just go 
on people's property and sometimes you have to. So it, it made me start saying, you know, and then I started realizing I couldn't do everything myself, like you said. So I was just like, it would be so much easier if you could just trap all the cats and call me when you get them. We would be done so much quicker than waiting on me because I'm doing my block, your block, her block, and you. So then, so then I just started seeing the more people, and then as people are, they're interested, you know, when I'm out there trapping, they're asking me questions, you know, and I'm like, and they care. So it's like, it just started turning into, I got so many people trapping now, it's ridiculous. You know, even elderly, elderly ladies, they put some of the young people to shame. They get it on the first go. I show them how to set the trap. They call when it's ready. They cover it up. They even sneak a little bit of food in the trap, you know? So I started seeing that I was, my time was getting, I was getting more cats done once I got the community involved. So I would think mm -hmm. that it came.